Welcome to Global Nicole. Today we're going to do shoulder shrugs or shoulder slumps, depending on the day, I call it a different thing. So we're going to be tackling similar concepts that you dealt with in episode 10 at the wall. Essentially it's part of what we did there with your hands against the wall, where you shrug your shoulders together and apart and together and apart. Except for we're going to be on our hands and knees, also known as a quadruped position. So here you're going to be exploring how your shoulder blades glide and slide and also stabilize on your ribs. You're going to be working with how your torso alignment, so how that spinal alignment is key for your shoulder girdle functioning and good health of your shoulders. And also how your hands can kind of begin to function as feet and that is really important as well for all this weight bearing into your shoulders as we come to your hands and knees. So let's get into our hands and knees position. So once you come to your hands and knees, grab a little padding for your knees if you need it. Also, if your wrists tend to be sensitive, I would say attempt to do some of this work on your wrist because it is really good to weight bear in your wrist. But if it's getting impossible in your wrist and it's distracting you from good form, come to your forearms and do the same thing. If you're on your forearms, you just want to make sure the elbows stay parallel to each other so you don't want to wing the elbows out to the side. So we're going to come to the hands and knees or the forearms and the knees and we're going to do a little do's and don'ts. So a couple of things is that you don't want to let your head drop down, right? We all sort of have our forward co head computer posture. So I want the head to float up. I also want the ribs not to sway down. So I want the ribs to lift up so the skull and the ribs are really light which takes a little abdominal work. I don't want the tail to tuck, right? So I want the tail to be free. And I'm thinking about this pelvis, rib cage, and skull alignment as I'm here. I don't want to round my ribs and slunch my shoulders, really like rounding my shoulders forward, right? I don't want my hand to be a little claw. I really want my hand to be broad and really flat, pushing into the ground like a big paw. And then I want to make sure that I'm still long here, so I'm really going for elongation between my head and my tail as I keep my shoulders with my ribs. So what we're going to be doing is just slumping the shoulder blades together or letting them slide together as my rib cage and my head drop down and then pushing through that really broad heavy hand, pushing down so that the shoulder blades come broad across the back, my ribs slide back up into my shoulder blades and my skull floats up with that. So we're going to start, we're going to do eight sets. You're going to breathe in. As you exhale, slowly let yourself drop down, like a little elevator, just going straight down. Inhale, fill back up, lifting the ribs and the skull up and the shoulders around the back. You're going to drop down again, shoulder blades shrug together, push through the hands, shoulder blades come apart. Right, keeping the hands broad, not like little claws on the ground widening the shoulder blades across the back. We're going to do, this is number four, and pressing and broadening the shoulder blades across the back. We're going to do four more. Breathing in. Exhale, breathing out for number five. Lowering and lifting. Number six. Making sure your elbows don't hyperextend like this, right? So keeping them um, from overextending at the elbows. One, seven, lifting up. Last one. Keeping the shoulder blades broad, we're gonna test the waters with our stability. So make sure the tail is free, the ribs are integrated, the skull is nice and light. Just test the waters by pushing into that whole right hand. Lift the left hand off. I find this is harder if you're doing it on your forearms, by the way. You're going to take your left hand down, press that hand into the mat, keep the shoulder blade with the ribs so you don't want to collapse there and twist your body. You want to keep that integration as you hover your right hand up and just testing the waters as you breathe there. Did your waist stay long on both sides? Did your tail stay free? Ribs stay integrated? Skull stay integrated? Take both hands down. Pressing into the right hand, reach the left arm out now. Same idea, keeping this shoulder blade on the right side with the ribs and bringing it down. Trying the other side. Pressing into the whole left hand, shoulder onto the ribs, reach the right arm out. As you do that, you want to make sure that you're still breathing 
and you're still going for length. And then one more time, each side, pressing into the right hand, reaching out with the left, keeping that integration of your shoulders and your ribs, bringing the left hand back down, reaching with the right hand again, and then coming down. Great work. So now you should feel a little broader, a little like you've moved and you want to move a little bit more in those shoulders, a little stronger and a little taller. So let me know how you're feeling, what you discovered in this exercise in the comments below. Thank you so much for joining me and until next time, keep moving.